All right, Shalom. Call Haloyim La Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai Bahasham Rechakodash. Double honors to our apostles and elders, a great millstone that rule well. Much peace and blessings to all you sense of Akim out there that's pushing this 100% truth with all sincerity, faith, and with charity. This is your brother Ash from the Great Millstone, Miami Camp, coming back with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai. In this lesson, Low one is edifying. I want to go into the book of Psalms, the 32nd chapter. Okay. Just uh, go through the psalm and give my two spiritual sense, uh, spiritually, skillfully add through the spirit of power of Yahweh Bashem Shai. Okay. Which, you know, I tend to uh, go into the psalms through the spirit and. The book of Psalms is just, you know, just speaking on the uh, book of Psalms, it, it covers everything when, you know, the different Psalms, the different, uh, you know, numbers, chapters, and the different the uh, pur purposes. You know, the scriptures say all scripture, well, that's uh, 2 Timothy, I believe, 2 Timothy, the third chapter, says that all scripture is given for edification, for proof. Or as I should, uh, should say, all scripture is uh, inspired by the Most High. And and it's good for, for edification, roughly paraphrasing. Okay? And the Psalms, the different chapters, they're all edifying. They're all for for our spiritual growth. But they all, you know, the different, they have uh, different chapters for different uh, things. Okay? You got Psalms 91. Which you know, going into the the Most High Yahweh through Son Yahweh Shai, also using the angels to to protect and to deliver. Uh, you know, during the times of trouble, you read that Psalms ninety one, and you can clearly see that's going into uh, Jacob's trouble. All right, the elect being delivered through Jacob's trouble. Okay, you got uh, Psalms fifty one. Which is a good prayer to pray when you are feeling low in the spirit, down in the spirit. That's that's to comfort you. Okay, and and, and, and while knowing that we fall short. Okay. But yeah, to the you know the, there are the different songs for different things, and this Psalms thirty two, it is uh, similar to Psalms fifty one. And it's this is uh spiritual man. This this is uh this chapter should should touch your spirit, okay? So let's get into it. Oh well and it's out of fine. It's a psalm chapter thirty one. So like thirty two and one a psalm of David Mashil a masculine Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven whose sin is covered okay and you know start with our apostles and elders we always go into the word bless what, what the true definition of bless the word bless in the Hebrew goes back to Barak which means to bend the knee so for someone to be truly blessed that means people will bow before them okay which the Esau Edom is blessed right now because he he's ruling the world he has the power and he's been given the power from Yahweh through son Yahweh Shai all right on the on the left hand side but he has all the nations in subjection unto, unto him so he's blessed but his blessing which the most high blessed him with the sword that's why he's able to, that's how he's, uh, his power, his blessing is in the sword with weapons, with violence. He's blessed. He's gotten the riches, the fatness of the earth through uh, rape, robbery, and murder. But our blessing, the true blessing for the Israelites starting with the elect is the new covenant. Having our sins forgiven, having our uh, transgressions covered having our, our, our uh, 
slate, our spiritual slate wiped clean by the sacrifice of Yahweh Shai. Okay? And that's for the whole nation of Israel, only for the nation of Israel, starting with the elect. So the, the uh, King David is saying that that elect man, he's going to be truly blessed. Starting with the elect man, but you have women of the elect as well. All right. That's why I said, blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven. If ultimately, if your uh, transgressions is forgiven, you're going to uh, escape. You're going to escape the wrath to come. While everybody else, like it says in Psalms 91, a thousand shall fall at my right, ten thousand at my left, but it shall not come nigh thee. Right? Why is that? Because he's part of the elect. Ultimately, your sins have been forgiven. So, the Most High is going to have mercy on you. You're going to be one of the last men standing. And you're going to inherit the riches of the earth. You're going to inherit the earth. That's the scripture saying, me shall inherit the earth. Just like Noah became a, 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 you know, a preacher of righteousness, moved with fear. And ultimately, he became, uh, uh, scripture roughly paraphrased, he became an heir of the world. Roughly paraphrasing. Okay. But the elect are going to inherit the earth. You're going to, you're going to rule and reign with Yahweh Shai for a thousand years. That you can't get no more blessed than that. And what I mean by a thousand years, that's going to be the first thousand years, you know, quote in Revelation of the kingdom of heaven built up. But it's going to be uh, infinitely. You can't get no higher or better blessing than that. But it starts with being pardoned. Okay? Which that's what we all want. Ultimately, that's what we're in this truth for. That's our ultimate hope. Is to have our sins forgiven because we 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 uh we all have a multitude of sins. And the scriptures say charity covered the multitude of sins. That's why we're doing this labor of love, this work. Charity, this is the ultimate form of charity, which Lord willing through this, working out our own salvation with fear and trembling, coupled ultimately and, and first and foremost with the sacrifice of Yahweh Shai, our Lord and Savior. That's what's going to uh, get our sins parted. All right. Verse 2 Blessed is the man unto whom Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, imputeth not iniquity. And in whose spirit there is no guile. Okay, so there's certain individuals on the earth that have sinned, that have done iniquity. As a matter of fact, everyone on the earth has. There's no one in this earth, there's no that uh no one living today or has ever lived outside of our Lord, of course, that have, have never sinned. But there are certain individuals on the earth right now that when the judgment comes, because you best believe there's going to be a judgment for all this sin and wickedness that's uh, being and has been and will will be committed on this earth. There's going to be a day of reckoning. There's going to be a day of judgment. But there's going to be certain individuals that are going to be pardoned from their sins in that day of judgment. Why? Because in their spirit, there is no guile, meaning inwardly, spirit, spiritually, their, their flesh, as Yahweh Shai said, the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. The elect of Israel, although they're in sinful flesh and commit sin like the rest of Israel, because only Israel can sin first and foremost, but the difference with them is... They have a different spirit within them. They have a, a righteous spirit within them. Okay. And the, the proof is that the proof of that is them repenting and turning to the Lord. Yahweh Bashmi Shai calling on his name, uh, turning from sin and trying to keep the law of, of the Most High Yahweh and the faith of Yahweh Shai to the best of their ability. They're working out their salvation. They're showing, they're improving through the spirit that in their spirit is no God. They're, you got the 
you know, starting with the prophets, the 144,000, the teachers, the leaders, the, the governors of Israel, they're preaching the word in truth and sincerity. Like it says in Revelation 14, okay, about uh, the Lord also called them virgins. Okay, virgins and, and not talking about someone who's never had sexual intercourse, but a man, first and foremost, a man that is pure in the spirit. The Lord said, in their mouth was found no guile. So that links with this, Psalms 32. Meaning, inwardly, that's why the scriptures say he's going to look at the inward man. Like it says in Psalms 51, like King David said, in, the, in thou desirest truth in the inward part. Roughly paraphrasing, okay? The inward man. Psalms 32 and 3. When I kept silence, my bones wax old through my roaring all the day long. For a day and night thy hand was heavy unto uh, upon me. My moisture is turned into drought of summer, Salah. Okay, so we have to, uh, we have to, when we go off, when we sin, we have to confess our faults. Okay, maybe certain things that you do and do you know is wrong, but you, you don't want to acknowledge it. You don't want to think about it. You just want to, you know, you're being reproved and rebuked and brothers are telling you, and but you don't want to hear it. You want to brush it off. You want to uh, justify yourself, make excuses. Okay. That's, that's, that's going to tear you up inside. That's going to dry, that's going to spiritually dry you out. Okay. The Holy Spirit is going to uh, withdraw itself from you. If you continue in that spirit. Okay. Verse 5, I acknowledged my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto Yahweh, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sins. So, you see, so that's the formula. In order to get your, your sins uh, pardoned, in order for the Lord to forgive you, because, you know, you, you have to acknowledge them. You uh, not acknowledging them. You acting like they don't exist, like it's, like like uh, like you're perfect. Then the Lord is gonna say, well, okay, since you're perfect, uh, well, let's see. We gonna the Lord's gonna try you according to your ways. Since you say you're perfect, instead of trying you according to your faith and your spirit and the sacrifice of Yahweh Shai, since you say you're perfect, you saying you don't need that. Okay, so you're going to be judged according to the law on how how, how perfect you are. <laughs> That's the spirit of, <laughs> you know. We we don't we 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 want to acknowledge our sins. We want to confess them, man, because the Lord knows. The Lord knows whether you want to confess it or not. And and first and foremost, the confession is made to the Lord. Being real with the Lord and being real with yourself. In your spirit. That's why I say in your spirit. There's no guile. It could be certain things that nobody know. Just you and the Lord. That's me. Ultimate, every little thing you got to, you know, tell somebody. Confess like they got the, uh, <laughs> and, and uh, those Catholics. They got the little booths where you go and confess and say all type of. <laughs> You be watching movies and shit. You see these people got all type of weird old bugged out shit, and and the and the uh, the priest can't tell nobody. You know, according to them, they, they just say, okay, say five Hail Marys and you'll be all right. That's a bunch of bullshit, man. Excuse my French. That ain't what the scriptures is talking about. It's a confession of sins. It's talking about confessing to Yahweh by Shem Yahushai in the spirit. Letting the Lord know that you 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 uh did wrong. Okay. And you you acknowledge it as wrong and, and you don't want to do it no more. Ask the Lord to forgive you and give you the spirit to be better. That's a spiritual conversion. 
not just you just like this uh lord said i uh with them uh talking about our people the israelites the lord said with their mouth they they give much praise but their hearts is far from me roughly paraphrasing okay verse six for this shall everyone that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found so all who are all that are godly the elect those that are slated for salvation the lord said they're gonna pray to the lord in a time where he's going to be found because it's coming a time where the lord is not going to be found hence uh ecclesiastes the 12th chapter remember now that created in the days of thy youth while the evil days come not and also isaiah 55 call ye upon him while he is near okay Surely in the floods of great waters they shall not come nigh unto him, right? Because that flood is coming. And when that flood comes, if you have not been being real with yourself, being real with uh, the Lord, acknowledging your sin and trying to be better, when that time comes, it's going to be too late. Because that's when the judgment is coming. That's going to be judgment time. When those floods come, talking about the floods of... of the armies of Esau Edom when the devil really comes down with great wrath knowing that he have but a short time when the most I really unleashes this devil <laughs> okay and you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna see Esau you're gonna see the real pure blood Esau Edom in a form like he's never taken on the earth before man because he's going out and the Most High is going to allow him. The Most High is going to send uh, uh, apparitions, different demons and left-hand spirits. He's going to unleash. It's going to be all hell breaking loose. It's going to be a flood of death and destruction. But the Lord said, for those that, that are godly and pray unto him, those that acknowledge their sin, when the flood comes, they, it's, not going, it's not going to come close to him. He's going to be kept. Verse 7, thou art my hiding place, thou shalt preserve me from trouble, thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance, Salah. And you want that for you, I want that for me. Okay, we have to want this for ourselves. We want to be compassed, being compassed about with songs of deliverance. That I mean, ain't no, you ain't got no fear in your heart outside of the fear of the Lord, of course. You 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 not worried at all about what's going on out here. You being compassed about with songs of deliverance, man. You you singing. All hell is going on. People getting destroyed out here. People starving. Babies dying. Bombs blowing. Buildings dropping. Bridges collapsing. Okay. With all that going on, you singing. You singing to the Lord, Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai. You ain't even worried, man. Songs of deliverance. Just like uh you read in uh Exodus. When our people came through the uh Red Sea and the flood uh swallowed up Moses. I mean Salakia. That was Satan. Uh the flood swallowed up Pharaoh and, and his his uh his armies they, they, they you, you, this, the scripture said they, they sang which is the song of Moses that's a song of deliverance okay which King David I believe also uh, sang that okay but the Lord said that the uh, 144,000 they, they were going to sing the song of Moses when they make it on the chariot Okay, but it's verse 8. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. And the eyes of the Lord are the angels. So the Lord is going to instruct us, teach us in the way that we're going to go spiritually, first and foremost, leading us uh, to uh, leading us in his truth and physically. We the Lord is going to have his men tapped in into a uh, heavy frequency in the times to come.
And they're going to be moving through the spirit. Go this way. Go that way. Talk to this person. Don't talk to that person. Right now. Leave right now. I go here. Look under this. <laughs> you know? Verse 9. Be ye not as the horse or as the mule which have no understanding. Right? We can't be stubborn. One thing about a, a mule, an ass, which I believe a mule is a cross between a, a ass and a, a, a donkey and a horse or something like that. But anyway, it's, it's, it's a stubborn creatures. The Lord told us not to be stubborn creatures that, that can't be led, that can't be taught. They want to do what you want to do. Be ye not as the horse or as the mule which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with bit, with bit and bridle, lest they come near unto thee, right? Like a like a dog, like a wild dog, a wild pit bull that ain't been trained. You try to walk it, it's walking you. You got you trying to bite people and shit, so you got to put a muzzle on them. You got to give them the, a spike collar so they don't try to pull you. Okay, Lord said, "Don't be like that." We can't be like that. We don't want to be forward with uh difficult, easy, uh hard to deal with. We want to be uh easily you. We want to be easily used by the Lord. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusteth in Yahweh, mercy shall come pass him about. So we're about to witness many sorrows. And the Lord's cook, we're seeing it right now, but the Lord said, This is only the beginning of sorrows. Right? I, would, I just uh, was walking walking uh, past the gas station and I could uh, hear, uh, you know, it was this woman pumping her gas. She was like, Oh my God! Oh my God! Because <laughs> the, the gas prices, man, when she saw how much it took to fill her car up, it's only the beginning of sorrows. Okay, but for us that trust in the Lord, mercy is gonna pass you about, which means you're gonna see the sorrow, you're gonna see people in sorrow, but you're not gonna experience it. And if you do get a taste of it, the most high is gonna comfort you, even in that. Be glad, all right, be glad in Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, and rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy. All ye that are upright in heart. Okay, so if you know that you've been serving the Lord, Yahweh Bashmi El Shai in truth and sincerity, you truly fear the Lord, you truly love the brotherhood, you truly love this truth. You like really acknowledging your sin, knowing that you ain't got it all, knowing that you need the Lord, knowing you need a savior, knowing you you you, you ain't you can't do it on your own, especially in the times we're getting ready to go into. You need help. You need protection, you need guidance, you need faith, you need wisdom, okay? You need mercy. Then rejoice. Shout for joy. Okay. Hey man, so with that, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem Hakudash. Until next time, shalom.